If you're a full-time RVer or you just want to be and you want to live off-grid, traveling in national forests and Bureau of Land Management lands without all the hookups and all the people, and you want to use this to power this, using this, you're going to need this. <laughs> and recently my this, my inverter, died and I had to install a new one and today I'm going to show you what I installed and how I did it. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. I'm Carolyn. Welcome back to my life living in an RV. If you're not familiar with how you turn solar into power, especially power to charge things that have a traditional 110 or 120 plug outlet, let me give you a little bit of a review. Your solar collects energy, collects power, feeds it into a battery which stores the power and then everything in your RV runs off the battery which is 12 volt. I think I explained that right. You electricians out there are going to probably challenge me, but that's basically how it goes. The solar gets the power, the power goes into the battery, the battery stores the power so that you can charge everything. When everything in your RV runs on 12 volt, your heater, your lights, your refrigerator, your little outlets, your cigarette lighter outlets, all of that is 12 volt. But if you want to plug stuff in using a traditional plug, you need to change that 12 volt battery electricity, that 12 volt battery power into 110 volt or 120. And how do you do that? You do that with an inverter. Well, the inverter does it. You just install the inverter. And the inverter actually changes that 12 volt power into 110. So it's direct current is a 12 volt battery. This is alternating current. It's all like crazy, like electrical stuff. <laughs> That's all you need to know though. You don't need to get into the weeds about how and why unless you want to. Most of us don't. We just want to make this work. And so recently when my inverter died, the one that was on the rig when I bought it, I don't even know how much power it could put out, but not very much. I could, I could uh, plug in my laptop, but I couldn't really plug in anything else at the same time. I don't even think I could charge two laptops at the same time. It was a very weak output inverter but when when it died i thought i hoped that i could just buy another inverter clip the wires plug it in and make it work and when i decided or when i was looking around at the different inverters i wanted to buy my first instinct was just to buy something quick and easy that i could install right away so that i could get back to being able to charge my laptops you might might remember the first inverter i bought to replace my old one it was a 750 watt inverter and it was really easy you just plug it into a cigarette lighter it was actually made so that you could have a uh, 110 AC power on the road, you just plug it into your cigarette lighter and it changes your, your car battery power into 110. The problem with that is it was so noisy. Well, this certainly is not going to work. <laughs> it was so loud. It had a fan to cool it off that ran constantly, even in like the spring when it wasn't very hot. It ran constantly and it was so annoying. So uh, and I think I ended up ruining it by, yeah, I did. I tried to run my Nutribullet on it. So I plugged my Nutribullet in and it just stopped working. And I don't know if it needed to be reset. I got mad and literally like threw it out the door. <laughs> so then I had to buy a new one. I had to install a new one. And I tried to install both of these in the same place that my old one was in the cabinet, uh, let me, let me go show you. It'll be easier to show you. So the first one you might remember was in here behind this cabinet and it was wired in basically to this cigarette lighter outlet, which I'm currently using. And I was hoping that I would be able to just put the new inverter in there. Okay. Actually, I thought these wires would just pull out, but they don't. So that's what this is. So I'm going to have to undo uh, these and reconnect it to the new one from here. And I did manage to rewire the 750 watt Polet, uh, watt, 750 watt Potec. I did manage to hardwire that in there and I got a spark <laughs> and I turned it off and I was like, yeah, no, this isn't going to work. So what I determined is that the wires, it wasn't, the wires were way too small for the amount of 
power that 750 watt inverter needed to draw from the battery and convert into uh, 110 power. So I realized I probably need to rewire the whole thing, but I ended up blowing the first one anyway, or at least I thought so. I didn't like the noise anyway, threw it out the door. So I bought another one. I bought the um, Kriger and I bought an 1100 watt inverter. And when I unboxed that second inverter, it became really obvious there was no way I was going to be able to wire it in where the old one was. The wires for that old inverter were literally like this thick. The wire I got, the cable I got for the new inverter was this. <laughs> Look at that. And I don't know much about electronics, but I know enough to know that I don't want my RV to catch on fire. I don't want to burn the place up. And I also know enough to, <laughs> I also have learned enough in my years on the road and doing stuff, you know, with inverters and converters and solar and batteries. I've learned enough to know that you can't try to wire something that can take this much power into something that can take that much power safely. So in other words, the amount, well, at least the amount of energy that's going to go through this is very little. The amount of energy that can go through this, again, you electricians are like shaking your head and you're probably going to tell me I'm wrong. This is a very layman's, laywoman's explanation of this. But, you know, these two things in the electrical world, I think you can agree with me, are not equal and that you don't want to replace this with this or worse, vice versa. You don't want to replace this with this. You're going to cause problems. So, uh, so I gave up that idea of trying to put it in there. And what this means is I would have to hook it up directly to my battery, which was a whole other issue in of itself. And I'm going to show you why. So my battery is right here underneath the step that you have to step up on to come in and out of the rig, which created a problem for me. How the heck am I going to install my inverter when I have this big, huge step to worry about? So this is my step. And uh, I was hoping that I could loosen the bottom of it. And I, I was hoping this was just a plate that would slip off, but it's attached. It's attached to the whole bottom. So I think I'm going to take the whole bottom off because that'll cut in to the wire here. But if I take that off, I can make it work. I tried to take the plate, the big, huge uh, metal plate off the bottom of the step to see if I could get the wires somehow to run between the wood part of the step and the metal part of the step. All right. You don't need that anyway. And then I can put the hooks back in. That might work. Oh, except for the hook. Ha, <laughs> shoot. All right, more troubleshooting. It's too bad this doesn't screw off because I do need a hook or it'll slide and I'll kill myself. I mean, it's heavy enough, but it'll slide. What can I do, what can I do? So see, this clamp clamps it on. There's got to be something I can do. But when I took the step apart, I realized that wasn't an option because there was no space. So then I got my handy dandy little uh, saw blade thing and I cut a hole out of the side of the step so that I could run the wires through the hole of the step. <laughs> So that plan didn't work. After living with the step without the metal plate and the hook that was attached to the metal plate to keep it in place, I knew it was just a matter of time before I killed myself. <laughs> it was just the wooden piece of the step that I just set on there. It's a pretty heavy piece, so I thought maybe it would work, but it was spongy, and I knew after some time the wood would probably warp but I knew it was just a bad situation so I had to find a way to put the metal plate and the hook that keeps the step in place back on and still be able to wire in the new inverter so what I decided or what I ended up with so first I ran it up here I did it I did it I did it boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. 
boop, boop. And that's because the wire that came, the cables that came with the inverter are only a foot long. And that was the only place that I could make it fit. But that didn't work um, because it was in the way and it was bulky. And so I hung it there temporarily just so that I could have something, an inverter, so that I could have power. But then I ordered three foot long cables. And then I went ahead and ran it you'll see here so I, I bought I bought three foot cables and I ran it over here and there you have it there is my inverter so it's uh it's it's screwed to the wall and I've got the cables running along here I had them screwed to the floor but that didn't stay screws not long enough and here it just runs into my battery see the cables uh it's a little crimped and i'm going to keep an eye on it but it's not really going through the plastic quite yet the problem is the problem is that i have this hard edge on my step so right now i'm having to deal with the uh, crimping and actually i tried to make the wire come up here so that this part is resting on it and not the sharp edge and i think that's what i've got going on here So that's it. I mean, I did the best I could with what I have and uh, there's not much else I could do with the step that I have and the batteries where they are right now. So another thing I tried, you might be able to see in there, I did try to drill a hole through this steel plate to run the wires through the hole so I could just run it through up here to bypass this whole crimping issue. And you'll see, I, I was successful. I drilled one hole, uh, one small hole that's not big enough to get the ends of the wire through. Uh, and you see, I tried then to make a bigger hole and I just couldn't get through with the bigger bit. And maybe my drill's not strong enough. Maybe the bits weren't strong enough. <laughs> you want to help? But I just, ooh, that's hot. But it just wasn't, I wasn't able to get through. Uh, that would have been best case scenario if I could have drilled holes through that steel panel and just run the wires through there. That would have been best case scenario, but that didn't work out. So the, this is a nice inverter. It's got nice readouts, so you can see the level of your battery. It also, oops, it also shows other things. But I don't, I don't need this display. I have my own display. But if you don't have a built-in solar display like I do, this is really handy. It's got two 110, 120 outlets. It's got two USB. So I just plug in, because it's way back here, I just plug in a power strip and then this... In this power strip, I have my laptop plugged in. It runs, it runs under this rug. And then I have another power strip plugged in, which is awesome. And for USB, I just use these. So these are USB, you know, converters. So that's really nice. I also have up here, I have, it's called a remote control, but it's wired. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call this a remote control when I think of remote control I think of like TV but they call it a remote control but just know that it's a wired remote control so it plugs into the inverter and then it and then it uh, you know attaches to this but it's nice because I can turn it on and off up here without having to go down there and the switch is on the other side it's on the bottom the way I installed it the switch the on and off switch is on the bottom of the inverter so this is a really nice setup it's totally working for me I'm very happy with it it's not nearly as noisy as the other one I mean it's 90 it's 89 degrees in here right now and the fans not running it, it runs very infrequently I mean I hear it sometimes but even when it kicks on to cool off it kicks off within a few seconds I mean it never runs constantly the Potex 750 watt even when it was 60 degrees outside even when nothing was turned on it the fan would run it was so loud and so noisy this one I barely notice it even though it runs every once in a while so I I'm really really happy with this uh, inverter so I hope you found this helpful. You know, I share my process with you because I am not electronically or mechanically inclined whatsoever, but I try things 
I try things. You know, sometimes I do decide to try things. Some things I think are above my knowledge and pay grade, and I do just say, screw it, I'm going to take it in and have somebody else do it. But sometimes I want to try to do things on my own, and that means sometimes I make mistakes that I maybe don't do things as the best possible way that can be done. They might be a little sloppy, but in the end, sometimes I get things done, sometimes I don't, but at least I tried. And I think by showing my process, how I troubleshoot things, how I go about tackling these projects, my hope is that I can inspire and motivate those of you who might be a little timid about these things to try them yourself as well. You know, it's really about empowering people to be independent. So hope you found it helpful. The the inverter, the Krieger inverter, I got on Amazon, so I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the video description so that you can check it out if you want. Just a reminder, I am an Amazon affiliate. Every time you shop my store through my link, I earn a little bit of a commission, and it doesn't cost you anything. Take away a little bit of money from Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and there's always a link. There is always an Amazon link to my store in my video description. So even if you don't want to buy the inverter, just go ahead and shop through the link and I will earn a little bit of a commission. So I'll put the video, I'll put the inverter link in the video description and I'll also pin a comment for those of you who can't see the description. And I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.